Are we on? Are we on? Welcome, welcome, welcome to Basketball Heads Live. I am your host, Glenn Poole Harding. And oh boy, we have a very special guest. But before that, I'd like to shout out my guy, Terrence Munch Williams, with this awesome book, Our PSA, a public service announcement on Mastering Your Personal Evolution. Check this out, guys. Go pick this up. Amazon, all platform that sell books. We support our own here in New York City. Now, on with the show. Tonight, this basketball head is one of New York City's best community coaches in New York City history. And when I'm talking about community coaches, we're talking about coaching that one, the legendary organization in AAU history, the New York Gauchos. He started out at Pinoc, 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 I'm a kill this word. Sorry about that, coach. Neighbor Center in Flushing, Queens as athletic director. Quite sure that's a Native American name. Should be ashamed of myself because I'm black for the Indian. This basketball head didn't got a chance to coach some of New York City's top players in New York City history when he got the job coaching at the legendary New York City, New York Gauchos. This list is too long to name them all, but here's a few. How about coaching Lloyd Daniels at 13 years old? Let's just start out by saying that, all right? Then he went on to coach Charnel Scott, David Kane, Felipe Lopez, Jamal Mashburn, Stu Williams, Jerry Ice McCullough, Damon Santiago, Eric Jones, Ronald Arnold, Sham God. That's right, he only need one name, but he's better known as God, Sham God. Corey Wright, Wendu Owens, Stefan Starberry, Marbury. Nisha Butler, the first female to play on the Gauchos team at age 14. Went on to do, do huge things, come back to the community and create a great STEM program for our kids. What about Royal Ivy? Jamel Thomas, Kendra Clark, led the NCAA in scoring two years in a row. Calvin Reese, Tim Thomas, Alan Griffin, now assistant coach at Syracuse, Shaheem Holloway, St. Peter's, and now Seton Hall, head coach. Julius Hodge, and my guy Shane the Dribbling Machine. Salute to Shane for making Westchester Community College Hall of Fame. And you already know he's one of the stars of the N1 fame. So, without further ado, help me welcome to the show, New York City legendary head coach, Dave Jones. Y'all ready? Y'all ready? Y'all ready? Yes, yes, yes. You have you just have stepped out into, into the world, world of chaos. chaos. Where everybody, Where everybody goes, goes hard. hard. Come on, come on. Go hard. Tickets get the game about to start. Hey, hey, coach. Hey, coaches. How you doing? Uh, gotta unmute your mic. Gotta unmute your mic and turn your mic around. I turn your phone around so we can hear you. 
Yeah, your mic is not on. Gotta put your mic on. Can't hear you. The phone is fine. You just gotta get that set set situated. And I can't hear you. I can't hear you. I got you. Yep, I hear you now. Yep. <laughs> Yo, I'm still learning this thing. That's man. all right, man. That's all right. That's all right. <laughs> That's all right. I'm blessed to be here, though, man. No, you no, know? I'm I'm definitely happy to have you. First of all, let me just give you your flowers, man, to let you know. Um, man, it, it was an honor meeting you uh at John Jay at the coaches clinic. And, you know, um, being there with my best friend and, and him just running down the stories of all the guys you coach and how you helped him in so many ways, man. It, it just inspired me. And I definitely had to have you on, man. So salute to you. I appreciate it. But, you know, I knew who you was, but I never met you. <laughs> I'm a you Broncos know, guy. So, yeah. You know, I was I'm blessed to have an opportunity to even be in a program like Gauchos in the early days because the competition was such, so, it was so fierce. You know, even in the, the younger divisions where I started at, you know, our whole model was to build young and be able to keep those kids and move them up as our own instead of you know, going to other program and snatching the kid. We, we never try not doing that. We try to build our own, train our own. And it worked out well for the Gauchos. And it also worked well for me because it every day was like a teaching moment for me. Yeah, man, you, you guys had some 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 awesome players come through that program. Um, I remember the fierce battles going against uh, you guys. And and it was at that time it was just Gaucho Riverside and Broncos, right? Um, and and now we have so many uh, AU programs which we definitely want to talk about. But I, I definitely want to jump into it and, and ask you um, who introduced you to the game. Well, the person that it was mainly community because I'm from you know the South Bronx, past some projects, and we had like role models. You know, I mean, how can you not take advantage of a center like PSA team, you know, where mostly that's where mostly everybody started at who lived in the project and see like pros every day coming in there and running back and forth. I was like one of the little kids sitting on the side watching Nate Archibald, Mel Davis. Um just a whole bunch of them, man. Yo, first of all, you don't have to say any more. <laughs> you, you got to see, see, you got to see guys who I wish I got a chance to see play. You know, you know, I had um, Eric Weaver. He's a referee. Uh huh. Older than I am, and he saw a lot of these guys play, and I, I'm just listening to, and I'm in awe just by hearing those stories about those great players and the impact that they had on the neighborhood and the community at large. You know, see Ricky Sobers and all them guys, and it was like a great honor, a great teaching tool for me, you know, and you had to wait to even play or just watch or shoot on the side baskets because you're not going to play. I think one of the best things that like kind of happened to me was that growing up, in the project, I was asked to play for um, Tiny All Stars. Had a a, a a team, thirteen and under team, and we played in citywide. And then at that time, citywide, if you win the Bronx or whatever, you got to play other boroughs. So we won the Bronx, and we had to go to Brooklyn, <laughs> and we played. Dun 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 dun. <laughs> <laughs> you know, dun, 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 but you know, they, you know, they had a they had a nice team. So it was coached by God bless them, um, Gil Reynolds. Yeah, listen, that's who taught me how to play. I, I want to give a shout out to my guy, uh, Ayatollah Beat. Thank you for spelling that word right. I think I missed the M in that. That's why it looks so funny to me. Appreciate you, uh, Jasmine uh, Finner. 
Thank you. And Treasure Jones. Definitely want to give a shout out to you as well. Appreciate you tuning in, watching your dad. You know, you know, in the project, we had like stars in the projects. We had <laughs> Iran Barkley. We had Nate. We had um, actors in the project. So we 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 was known for everything, you know, in the project. We was just just like basketball. We was like a well-rounded project, you know. And there was other projects, the same thing too. Like in Mitchell Project, you had the Archie, you had um, the Stricklands, you had the Howards, you had the, um, the the Coleman's, you had you had all of them out there. We, everybody was battling, you know. So it was a great opportunity for us as kids to play tough competition among and against each other, you know. One thing you, I, I, when I'm listening to you speak, you mentioned some families. Right. And what I want to do, I want to put together either a storyboard or I'm going to make a post of some of the greatest basketball families in New York City history. Nice. I don't claim to know them all. And I know there's going to be some people that's going to be left out, but I want to make sure I tap into those people from those areas that know about them so we can make sure that they, they get their flowers as well because we have some great basketball families that came out of New York City that, you know, don't really get the recognition anymore. Yeah, the Irvins, you know, that's that's Dedrick and Kyrie. They met you, you know. So, you know, that's that area is, is, is serious, man. Our area was serious. We didn't play. You know, if you come from outside the project, you better know. You better learn how to. You better know how to play. You're gonna come out with an L anyway. But you know, <laughs> that's the truth. You know, no. the Greens. I mean, we have some great names in there. You know, the the, the um, Machito. You know, I don't know if you know about Machito. I've I've, I've heard guys come on here and talk about him. I have Boy. Ricky Sobers up here. I have Ross Strickland up here. So these guys, these names are very familiar. Yeah, Machito was something else. He played with us with um, Tiny All Stars when he we was we was all thirteen and all that. So you know we all know each other. God bless him and everything. You know the Dowards, you know the Greens, the Millers. We we all was nice. You know, I, and and plus the thing about you know people don't realize that when you're in the project, everybody had like a nickname. <laughs> that's right that's right that's you know, right you know, and sometimes you I, didn't know you didn't know god's real name you knew his nickname is and, almost his whole right. life and, and that's how i was they they used to call me fat boy man <laughs> you know that was like you know that was one of the things they called me but i was like nice I right shoot you know so going on to that but the person that really inspired me a lot was too when i was at ps31 public school they had a team that was coached by a veteran coach named Mr. Page. Mm. And we used to practice on a one-way street, man, in the sun. I knew him. He knew me since I was in the school. And Ricky Sobis was one of his one of his students. So we used to work him out. You know, I didn't know who he was until I seen him on TV against the Phoenix Suns killing the Knicks. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so we had some great memories, man. You know. Who who was the best player in the neighborhood that everyone wanted to be like when you was coming up? Tiny. Tiny. No, I know tiny. <laughs> That's it. I, I we did a show, we did a show last week on who was the greatest New York City point guard to come out of New York City. And, you know, you got people from different eras saying different names. Um, but I'm quite sure it's uh, Tiny Archibald when it comes to you. Yeah. Tiny. He's a homeboy, man. He's, he's from the project, number one. You know, know him personally. Yo, Tiny. I'm going with Tiny. I'll tell you, but I do like Tiny, period. Then there's another tier. I think nobody can really, like, touch Tiny. 
It's the guy that led the league in scoring and assists. Who done that? Yeah. And the size, his height. Who done that? Yeah, it's kind of hard. It's it's kind of hard to kind of compare anyone to that. You know, that's God given talent, man. You know, sure. And I didn't know he didn't play high school ball until his senior year. That's right. That's right. I was blown away. That's right. And you know, he's still helping the community and his and his friends. He got like he got some real good people around him. They're helping the community, that the whole South Bronx. And he's not just helping them, he's helping other neighborhoods. You know, give you know everybody should like recognize that. You know, here's a guy that's a Hall of Famer, and he's putting time in, he's putting work in, still putting work in. You know, yeah, salute to the legendary one, Nate Tiny Archibald. Definitely gonna come on the show soon. We definitely working hard trying to make that happen. He was supposed to come on a couple of months ago, but I had to right. push the show back. But uh, he's definitely showing love, man. So salute to the great one. I hear that, and you know the name is Pominock. Pomin, yes, Pom. I had the N <laughs> with it, the, where the M should be. I had like three N's in there. Uh huh. You know that was like a like a stepping stone for me. Pominock Neighborhood Center, yeah. Coach Quiet Center, you know, and it was right across from Queens College. So I was directed to put a program in. And also I ran the evening and after school programs for the kids. Mm. And I also, during the summer, I had a basketball school. And basketball school, my staff was um, Rob Holford. He was head of academics. Um, Vincent Smith. Vincent Smith, my man, Vincent Smith, Kenny Smith, brother, yeah. who was head of skills, ball handling skills and basketball skills. And my man, God bless his soul, Fred Neal was my assistant and I was a director. So we had like a great, great turnout. We had close to about a hundred kids for the first year. We also had like, the counselors were like Billy Donovan. <laughs> You know, he was one of my head counselors, you know, so it was it was a great opportunity. That's when I had kind of met Lloyd Daniels. Lloyd was like about 13. Fred had Fred had told me about this kid that probably plays baseball better than basketball. But he's like leaning toward playing basketball. These, these are positive texts, Coach, because you are saying some amazing things right now. Listen, I, who told me this? Who, it was a couple of people that told me this. Um, Derek Chivas, yeah. Coach Ray Haskins, they uh -huh. were saying that Lloyd was a uh, – Rich Brunson, they were saying Lloyd Daniels was an excellent pitcher. Yes, also a first baseman. He was nice. I heard this. <laughs> you know. Wow. This is you know, this Kenny is... Anderson was in the camp. You know, we had a nice camp. You know. Coach, you 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 are you are so blessed to be in an era where some of the greatest players in New York City history was actually getting their first action as yes. youngsters. Yep, when they was young, and, and I think that was the age I think that you should start at. Cause you, that's where you get the loyalty. That's where you get the the commitment, and them kids won't leave you. You know. So what happened was that Fred, we was talking about getting together and putting a team together. So I said, all right, let's put a team together. I'll get six kids from the South Bronx in my project, and you get six from Queens. So I got the six kids. And he said, there's a tournament in the in Roberto Clemente called Governor's Cup. Mm -hmm. So I said, all right, so yeah, let's try that. We got in there. Me and him was coaching. And our first game was against Gauchos. And this is the first time I seen probably the best backcourt at that time, Pearl Washington and Elmer Anderson. Talk that talk, coach. I said, oh, my God. But we had a nice guard named um, Corey Williams. 
and we had this other young this other young kid that went to Texas Tech. Now, coach, when didn't mean to cut you off. Didn't mean to cut you off. What which Corey Williams now? Because they're like I know two or three Corey Williams. Were this one Corey? is from this one is from Queens. Okay, okay. He, he was from Queens. Got gotcha, nice gotcha. play. He went to um, North Carolina University of North Carolina Charlotte. Nice player. And it was Lloyd on our team, a young 13-year-old Lloyd, you know. So we, we played the Gauchos and we beat them by like about two points. It was a surprise to me, a surprise to everybody. Mm. Right, so now after the game, game's over, I'm prepping the team. I'm scouting, looking at Riverside, who we have to play next in the championship game. Fred went in the back, you know, just walking around. And I think that he, and he met Lou. Met Lou, nice guy. Talked to Lou, and Lou said that um, Dave needs some help. He needs some coaches. Would you like to come down and coach? Fred said, I don't mind doing it, but how about my partner? He said, No, you could bring him too. You know, so two days later, we go down to 135th Street. PS197. That was the that was the second Gaucho gym. First Gaucho gym was at, at the Y, 92nd Street Y. Mm. We went to that gym, little gym, had to go downstairs, and they had tryouts. So we went downstairs, we just watching. And then Lou and Dave, who's a, a, a very good coach, very good strategist, very good straight up coach. He came and they talked. We talked. Now I'm like the new Jack. So you see, I think they knew Fred anyway, but they heard of Fred. So they told Fred that he could coach juniors. Everything they had the meeting. I was even included in the meeting. I'm outside watching the the the, the tryouts. So they come out. So I said, yo, where am we be coaching at? So Dave and Lou said, well, you could do biddies and midgets. I said, all right. So I did biddy and midgets, but not realizing biddies and midgets, that team didn't lose a game all year. I mean, I had like Sean L. Scott, Leonard Williams, Arthur Anderson, Khalif Hill, um, Larry Timberlake, I had bought up, when I was in Queens, I bought down um, Jason Gilliam, mm. Stephen Frazier, and um, Khalif Reeves. We destroyed everybody. But the competition was so tough in Rucka. I mean, there was veteran coaches there. And, you know, you should learn from veteran coaches or even your, your, your opponent coaches you know, for education. And that's what I was kind of doing. I was going against like Tommy Swinton, T.S. Bucks at the time. I was going against um, Thurman, Thurman Player at the time. I was going against um, the Mustangs, um, Tony Rosa. These guys was like battle tested, you know. And when they come to games, they bring a whole crew with them. People, family, the beach, bleachers be full. You know, um, um, from Douglas Sam, um, God bless his soul, um, Don Jenkins. There was all these veteran guys I had, I was going against. And I was like, not just hanging with them, I was beating them, you know. So there was one thing that in which um, Lou always said was that it's about winning. So, you know, I'm just looking when he said that to me, it's about winning. And he said, nobody's remember a second place winner. There's no second place winners. It's just win, win, win. <laughs> so I think that got me adjusted and made me push harder with my kids, push harder with myself to not lose, win. Because one of the things that we did have was that if you lose, you're not traveling. <laughs> you know, who don't want to travel? That was, that was very important. You know, who who don't want to travel? Who who don't want to go to Vegas, San Diego? 
you know, Hawaii, places like that, because they got their heads ready, their minds ready. When they get older, when they move up into junior, senior, those are the trips that they could look for. You know, that was the cookie. That was the bait. So they played a tail off. So then it was up to me to drill them, to get them hard, let them run the bag. And some guys know what the bag is, do the rope. You know, frog jumps, all that. I did all that. If you're tough, you stay. If you're not, doors open. I'm I'm glad you you're talking about that because now since there's so many AU programs, the 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 talent has thinned out, right? But when you get to those high levels of college basketball, and NBA, they let you know. You either get prepared to play and win, or you sit down, or you don't play. You know, a few of my my ex players that went to college, like Gary Saunders, Charlton Clark, you know Bernard Barrows, they say, "Yo, your 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 practices was harder than the college practices. It was easy." I said, "Well, that was the whole the whole thing." Make it easier. I always say that if you make the practices hard, the game is easy. Mm. You know, and this, to me, that's the truth. The game is easier. You know, I used to used to hear my voice across the 140th Street Bridge in Rucker. You know, I had calmed down some, but you know, you just hear my voice, you know, it's just a command, just, you know, sometimes you got to like fake the funk and they don't know that. So you got to do that. <laughs> no, that's real. That's real. And, and, and somehow the kids will come around. That's right. Um, the kids will come around. Yeah. And then you know who got the heart and who don't. And it's also, you got to pick out the kids who could take it and the kids that can't take it. You know, like a kid like Hector Alvadova. That Riverside coach, him, he was, he was one of my players. Mm. He was so tough. Tough. Came off the bench, he'd get you 20. Because we had a tough, tough crew. There's a numerous, numerous kids that I gave you that list was like that. You know, Khalif Hill, excellent defensive player. Eric Harris, excellent. I had defensive players that played D. And I would tell them, I said, man, you're going to get offense. Play D. Stop your man. Be responsible and stop your man. Wow. I was watching this documentary about AU programs. Uh, it was about the Compton Magic out in California. Right. And this parent was kind of explaining the process of the AU circuit and e uh, YBL. And what he said is, the reason why these programs play so many games is the thin out the herd. Because you got so many kids and everybody's not going to make it. Everybody can't go through the process. Because when you get to the NBA, there's 82 games. You're not even playing close to that many games in a year in high school or college. And that's something that you got to do out the whole time period being in the NBA. The process back then was a little bit different than what it is now because now the sneaker companies controlled the AAU circuit. Whereas, you know, you had different uh, clubs from different areas that had these uh, tournaments that they put on for AAU programs from around the country. Right, right. right? I think... At the, like the word process is the word in which that we had because we was kind of one of the first ones that was, we was like the Mavericks. We had our own. We didn't, sneaker companies, we didn't need a sneaker company. We had Lou. Lou was, this, Lou was enough. And they know that, but see, it came down to that the players, the players that the sneaker companies want, they want to sign. But again, we had our back end. So, you know, we didn't have, we wasn't thirsty like a lot of people. You know, we just like did what we had to do. And we told the kids that I said the, the whole process is education too. I said, you get a free education, that's what we're looking at. 
I said, hey, you know that nobody, everybody ain't going to make the league overseas or whatever. But you know what? I could say this. The Gauchos turned out lawyers, Vinny. Mm. Doctors turned out doctors. Doctors turned turn out teachers. You know, we did all that. We had an SAT. It was like one of the first programs to have an SAT program ran by Mike Wilder, who was a principal of a school in the Bronx. Wow. Uh, free. And you had to go through that. If you don't go through that, you don't play. That's how we were. Mm. You know, people don't know that, though. But, see, they want to see the negativity or say the negativity, but the positive. You know, we had kids. When the gym opened up in 86, it was crazy. It was the best thing that happened in that area. You know, I had kids that didn't want to go home. Mm. They, they stayed and played basketball. Shot around. And the parents knew where they were. So they were safe. You know, so, you know, big ups to the Gauchos. Riverside, those those the main programs that started all this. Yes. You know? Yes. So I, I'm, I'm looking at... <laughs> I'm looking at an article, somebody uh, from Legends Clothing Company uh, to look up the, the top 10 best uh, AAU programs ever. And for somehow, and some reason, let me see what year this was done. Uh, 2014, there is no way that the Gaucho should be on everybody's list. Founded in 1967, one of the premier powerhouses of AU programs in the country. And there were times when, you know, you guys would do, win the Nationals on a regular basis. It was a regular basis. You know, who could say who in, in New York and in, in, in our state beat the Russians? That was a great job by Dave McConnell in 87. But see, they forget about that. They beat a Russian national team. I was on the staff. I was assistant coach sitting. I was front row. I watched that game. I watched Arnold Bernard take over. I watched Dow Reed make that big shot. God, God bless his soul. I watched Jonathan Duck fight them seven footers, them six nines, They're getting rebounds, and Billy Singleton. You know, they fighting. You know, Carlton Hines, God bless him too. You know, doing his thing, you know. But see, they forget about that. You know, well, this is why we here, coach, to make sure people don't forget about the greatness of New York City. So that's right. We're gonna make sure that these these names stay alive. Uh, Leonard Williams, he's shouting out all the the, the legendary tournaments, boys of yesteryear, citywide, Rucker, PAL, and Water Your House. He said we won them all. We Thank you, Coach all. Dave Jones, Brown Ball Classic, the first one in Patterson Projects. That's so, right, and it started at Patterson Projects. And it was, it was a, the story behind that was that the year after the gym was was up, I was talking to Lou. I said, you know, we need to do something for the community to, so they can know who we are and who you are. I said, you know, I could run a tournament outside for the summer for 13 and under. He said, all right. So I took it to pass some projects and I had friends, Derek Robinson, Ron McCann's, Mo McCann's, Chip, you know, I had all them guys. Bobby Jones, God bless his soul. He was a part of it too, you know. Now these guys all live in my project, mm. you know, you know. And we ran that tournament and it was a great tournament outside 13. You know, we had heavy hitters in there, Mustangs, Riverside, Sonics. We had everybody in there. And that was one of the funniest things that happened was that, and he's one of my my best players. Even today, I, you know, I, I like him so much because he had changed so much to the positive as Daryl Parsons. Mm. Daryl Parsons was my best recruiter, man. I, I really feel that kids are the best recruiters. That's right. <laughs> so I'm serious, man. Because you know what he did, man? He recruited three great players for me. So I'm walking 
And he said, and I said, Dad, I need another big man because we playing Riverside and Mustangs. He said, Dave, I got this kid around my block. He's not doing nothing. I said, you sure? Yo, he's like 6'5", six, 6'6". Six, six. Really? 13? I said, yo, bring him to the game. Damn kid was Jamal Mashburn. Mm, Monster Mash. Man, I, I called him smooth, man. When I seen him put the ball on the ground like a guard and shoot jump shots, 25 footers, and just going by people and finger rolling, not dunking, finger rolling right up on him. I said, who is this kid, Daryl? Yo, man, he, he just hang around the block, man. He be walking around, he's good, he's cool, man. He's my man. I said, he's the right age? He got his birth. I said, let me see his birth. So I know how to check a phony birth to a real birth. I said, he's real. <laughs> <laughs> you had a unicorn, coach. <laughs> Yo, you know, you got to check them births in them days, man. You know? So what happened was that I was trying to kind of hide him, you know, for practice and everything. So I, I took him to, we went to a practice. So at the time, Lou was there, the, the coaching staff, Dave McCollin was there, and he had like a stack team with Lloyd Daniels and Conrad McCray and um, Yoda. And man, he had a great team. I think that was a heck of a team he had, that junior team. And when they seen Mashburn, I knew I lost him. He had to move up. <laughs> well, listen, you, you, you were the first one to present him to the world, so it was salute me. to you. Yeah, yeah. Definitely salute to you. Yeah, it was me. For everybody that's in here, if this is your first time the on the show, make sure that you subscribe and hit the like button. It, it, those things cost you nothing. I appreciate you. Let's support this program, and let's share it. Y'all got a chance to share it to other people. Let them know Coach Dave Jones is on Basketball Heads. Thank you to all my basketball heads that's in the building. Um, let's see what some people are saying in here. She's, let's go back up. Tina Mills said, my grandson play right now for Mamba, which is now Sports Academy. They have a lot of kids playing for them. Salute, salute. She said, facts, coming from dysfunctional homes, that crack era, it was an escape for them. That's why. That's listen, what it was, listen, definitely. Listen. That was my era, so I understand, yep. right? That's right. So, you know, we think that New York City is just an isolated city. This is going on all over the country. All over. And the fact that we are the Mecca, and, and you had a chance to be at the helm of the front of this and, and get kids and grab them and make sure that they stay off the streets, that's just one hell of a job, you know, that you did to give your time and your efforts your blood, sweat, and tears. But you know, I had, but you know, there was other coaches in that building that did a hell of a job too, like Vernon Gary, like um, Reggie Howard. You know, um, David Britton was a, a big help to me by just talking, especially after before. Like I did, you, I did Golden Hoops. I think it was ninety four and ninety five. I won that back to back. And he would just sit on the bench next to me and tell me, because he had pro eyes, and he would tell me this and that, and that. And I would listen, and then I would make an adjustment on my own, and I would see it, you know. And Golden Hoops at Columbia University was it. If you win there, you're the best team in the city. So that was a lot of pressure. You better blow that whistle and let them know. Yo, coach. This is what we're missing right now in New York City. Absolutely. I think the corporations kind of watered down the meaning of the competition in New York City. Absolutely. That golden hoop was such an awesome thing for New York City, and it kept the best basketball players here. Now they're leaving to go out of town. And they're leaving out of town and going out of town. I, I Let me tell you something, Paul. I seen when I was – Assistant coaching with the at, at Golden Hoops, Dave McConnell had you know he had that under control. Right. Yo, he had a team a few years ago. It was um, Chris Brooks, God bless him, um, Arnold Bernard, 
Corey Wright. I mean, he had this team that was down against Riverside at halftime by like about 20. Man, they came back. Lloyd was, man, they came back and they won that game. That was one of the craziest games I've ever seen, man. You know, just like that Russian national team. I think that game was the game in that building. And you can find that game on YouTube still to this day. That's right. That was the game, man. You know, and all to Lou. Lou, the one that set that all up, you know, he, he, he had the vision, and that was the vision, you know, international. Now you see everybody else is doing that. You got kids from coming over from Africa, wherever, and they're trying to tap in to the basketball here if it ain't the EBA, um, high school, charter schools, you know. So, you know, it's, it's something that we started, something that we did. Something that we st that we should take credit for personally, but you know, the best way to me is to take the credit is just be silent and watch. No, nah, we we, <laughs> we gonna we gonna make sure the world know about this, coach. <laughs> for sure. Salute to my guy Tar Rivero. He said, "Can't forget uh, Bubba McGee's Harlem PAL, a one twenty third Eighth Avenue, and the Sun Devils." That's right. Yeah, That's right. yeah. Nah, you know there was. There was right. like, you know, people don't realize that Andre Barrett, another gaucho, that was that was what we had, you know, and he was dynamite. Bernard Barrows, these are little guards. It was dynamite, man. You know, we had Van Damien Green that went to Manhattan College, went overseas to France and just start killing everybody. And they probably one of the better ones out of it was Jerry McCullough, two time. Um, MVP overseas in France, and then when Philly seen him, they wanted him back up for Iverson, and they gave him the contract. He turned it down because he was making wow. more overseas, which was smart, you know, for him. You know, that is that is amazing right there. All right, coach. Now we, we talked about. The Gauchos and the AU being prominent in kids' lives. But back then, the high school and the AU teams kind of partner up to help the kid get to the next level. Now it's just strictly the AU programs. Why why did the Gauchos and other programs in that era kind of respect what was going on at the high school level? I think personally that the high school coaches – especially in public school, it was more lenient to us because they knew that we had the, not just the players, they know that they're getting ready-made players. I think it was different in the Catholic school, though. Catholic school, they was a little bit kind of greedy. They wanted more. I think they, they um, kind of screwed everything up. If they would have just left it alone and let when the season start, if it's varsity, let them play varsity, but don't interfere in our season, which is summer. And they can, that's when everything kind of got like kind of twisted and screwed up because then they want, now they want teams to play in the summer. Our kids. I, you know what? <laughs> now that you think about it, I didn't play with my high school during the summertime. That's what I'm saying. I didn't even see my players, my teammates, unless we played on the same AAU team or summer teams, which that really happened. That's right. You got a chance to see what the other basketball players, how they were developing, and you can kind of see where you, you know, going to be at for the next year. Right. Right. But now everybody's with each other all year round. All year like, round. Except, except when the AU, the the sneaker company, the sneaker con uh, sneaker companies That's call, right. then they let their players go. They let their players go, you know. And I think that was one of the things that Riverside Gauchos we had was that we traveled. We went to places where nobody, Israel, you know. Um, you know, Italy, Paris, 
you know, all over the I remember the you place. guys going to Hawaii. Hawaii. That was like a, a every year, every so summer. I'm jealous of you guys. You guys is going to all the top places. You know, just like you know, in all. You know, Steph. Steph was a part of all this too. Steph, Sham God. You know, they, they, we had, it, it was like that, man. You know, really, we didn't have to do much recruiting. You know, it was just the name. You know, if you win, who don't want to be with a winner? You win the travel. Hey, we're going to Hawaii. Where are you going next week? Um, I'm going to um, Coney Island. Oh, we're going to Hawaii next week, man. You want to come? <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, where would you go? Where do you want to go? You know, you know, I like got like really back or, you know, more interested in coming back through a few people like Reggie Howard because he was coaching at Longwood Prep. Mm -hmm. And he asked me, this is like during when I was, you know, I was doing good and everything like that. But I was just watching my kids, man. My kids was getting older. And that was another thing. I don't never want to like forget that. I had my kids. They was all in high school. My three boys. You know, two of them play football. My youngest one is is at is right now is at Nourishell High School. He's a football player and basketball, but in football, he's nice in football. Like my middle son, he's nice in football. My other son, he was basketball head. You know, but I had to watch that, and that's why I kind of like stepped away a little because they was growing. You know, and and then during beyond that, before that. I was involved in an Iona prep. It was one of the coolest places to play, to coach at. I was a freshman coach for six years. I won, I won like five, four freshman championships and one division championship. My last year, the sixth year, I got sick. I had kidney problems. See, people don't know that. You know, I had, I had, I had two kidney operations. Wow, coach. I'm good though now. Glad I'm to have good. you here, Coach. You know, God is good. Had a good supportive family, wife, everything. You know, and that's what you need. You need that support. I had that support, got stronger. Then I got a little AAU program called Newbury. Mm. Started off with a Newbury program. I connected with a friend of mine, Shay. Put the sun down. So we like traveling every time. We're going to Hoops in the Sun. I'm at Hoops in the Sun. And you know who's there? Jadakus. Jadakus is there. And he says, hey, man, I, I always like the way you coach. And I said, look, I said, yeah, I know. Yeah, that's Jadakus here. We talk. I said, yo, man, I want to get an AAU team like like my friends, LeBron and 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 um, Melo and all. I said, say no more. I said, you sponsor us? This is your team. And we had a nice crew. He said, bet. We played played against Melo. You know, we lost to them by two in the championship at um, down on 145th Street. We traveled. We won, we, won a, we won a lot of games, you know, with them. But sometimes when you, you have to make sure that the people that you deal with, that you work with are straight up. Because one thing I never liked was merging. I, I just didn't like that. I didn't like another team to merge with me or another program because we had the name, they didn't. So now they feeding off of us, my partner and them, they accepted that I didn't. So I stepped down. I stepped down and that was it, mm. you know? Wow! But he was a good guy and everything. Nah, man. Jay, Jay is a, a good guy. He and and yeah. also he he's a lover of the game as well. So yeah, he's I, a lover of the game. Me and him, we still we still like talk and everything. Just like well, Grand Pooba, good guy. I coached his son, you know, in New Rochelle. You know, good guy, man. They see me, they respect. You know, I respect. You know, and people don't realize that they talk about Cameron. Cameron started with the Gauchos in, in our Sunday, Saturday, Sunday program. He was coached by Mo, um, uh, Mo McCanns. He played. I got pictures of Cameron, Mace, playing with us. You know, that's please, how if, if you If you could send me some of those pictures, please, that, that would be awesome. I got you. But I, those, they played with us. They Gauchos. 
Mm. I know they talk about real estate. Nah, they got you. They came from our Saturday. It came from our farm system Saturday, Sunday program. And Mace, um, Cameron and Mace was nice. They was nice when they was young. I've heard. I've definitely heard that. You got another one of your players in the building, uh, Ronnie Arnold. He said, what's up, uh, Dave? My first chose coach and mentor. That's him. One of the greats. He was he was he was a monster, man. <laughs> definitely got Paul Scurry from the Scurry family. Man, we talking about those great families. That's right. He said, uh, Mr. Jones, good to hear your story. Yo, he's he's a, he's a good brother, man. Heck of a player, man. Definitely, definitely. Oh man, this is this is awesome. Tom Rivero said, "Ask him how it was coaching Harlem greats, Gaucho's great, Terrence Brocknick, Charles Beck, Randy Workhorse Grant." Yo. Randy Grant was legit. And see, I didn't even coach them guys. Dave McCollin coached them. It was that was a heck of a team, man. Terrence Brodnick from Brandeis. Ooh. Problem. Yeah, I had him on a couple of weeks ago. Awesome, awesome player. Problem. <laughs> definitely, Problem. Definitely. Um let's see. Earlier I talked about meeting you at the Charnel Scott Coaches Clinic, right? Right. What was it like for yourself and other coaches to lend a hand to one of your former players? You know, that is so, it's so, that means that your job, what you've done didn't go to waste. It, 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 it hit somebody, hit a nerve. It, it, he wanted to coach. That's like a few of them that, that's coaching now out here in the city, even in the NBA, like Sharon God, like Royal Ivy. You got, you got a young man like um, Andre Barrett that works in the NBA office. You know, you got guys that's coaching in Kentucky, Orlando Antigua, and, and all these other guys. Um, Rashad um, Davis is at St. John's. You know, um, Garfield John is at St. John. So these are all gaucho guys that played in the program, and they're going further with their basketball, loving their basketball, loving their community, you know, and that's a great plus. And like I said, all that credit kind of will go to, like, Lou and Dave because they, they started this whole wheel of success. You know, they, they just – Pick the right people and just ask for the little things, you know, be consistent, win. And and win is like a harsh thing because sometimes you, you know, sometimes you get scared to lose. And I say that to kids. I said, be scared to lose, you know, so you're going to have to win. So they go out there, they pick you up from baseline to baseline, and they play so hard for you, you know, and you get great results results from that. You know, for me, everybody else is different, and I think that's what the great thing about coaching. Not everybody have the same theory. Everybody have different theories that we all can learn on. We're not talking about taking your whole theory, but maybe taking little bits and pieces and just studying it, and maybe I, it could fit with me a little. This I could do this different. I could do that different, and that's what it's all about. You gotta learn twenty four seven a day. You know, you know. Believe me, Gauchos are proud that a guy like Ross Strickland is a head coach at LIU. For sure, we all are. You know, we proud of that. Yeah. You know, you know, you know. All our Gauchos that's successful, not playing basketball, we proud of them. You know, because they doing positive things out here in this world, you know. So every time when I hear a story or hear, hear from them, I feel happy. I feel good, you know. Well, we always talk about all the great guys that are doing some great things. What about the Gaucho's first female player, Nisha Butler? Hey, you know, they had just retired her high school number at Riverdale, um, last week, I was trying to make it, but what happened was that my son had a football game and he injured himself, my younger son, making a tackle. <laughs> His hand went, the finger went through a face mask. He was playing middle linebacker, but he's a running back too. But he um, 
and went there and I had to like attend to that. But Nisha Butler, I, I would never forget how she first came down, how I met her, I was at her father, great man, asked me to um, take her to the next level. At the age of 13, take her to, because she had a great coach with her too. Anyway, Walter, you know, and he, um, he understand, he knew, and he knew me. And I trained her like I trained the, guy, like the guys. And she excelled. I got, I put out there with the, against other teams. She was killing them. Mm. And this is a girl that was the all time leading scorer in New York State history. You know, she did a great job out there. I wasn't scared to not put her out there. I put her out there. I said, hey, you want to play? All right, get out of here. <laughs> you know, so no, it was an outstanding. As a matter of fact, she was the first girl I ever coached, first girl mm -hmm. I ever trained. I don't train girls. You know, ain't nothing, you know, nothing wrong with it. I just didn't. Because sometimes I think I'm a little bit too hard. You know, I thought maybe I was scared. I didn't scare. I was hard on her, too. You know, I was trying to make her quit. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't and quit. and tell you what kind of person they are as well. Yes, yes, they're hard. See, I, I do that to all the kids, man, all of them. I try to make you quit. You want it? Let's see how much you want it. Right. Dave Britton was, is a great person, too, a great motivator to coaches, great motivator to, you know, to the program. He oversees a lot of things for us. And, and I was grateful for that. Grateful for Reggie Howe for helping me. I was grateful for my man, Vernon Vito. He was the one that, that was, if I need, if he, if we know I needed a kid, he'll go out drive and get the kid, get the kid and bring him to the game. Ain't that many coaches, assistant coaches would do that. You know, there was one time I put him out there. He didn't like it, but I did. <laughs> I let him coach a game by himself. And he got the hang of it. He won, and then he beat me and went a citywide. And I had Felipe Lopez on my team. Wow. And midgets. You know, so, you know, I was happy for him. Yeah, you the know? kids are never going to forget that, and not, neither is that coach as Listen, well. he don't, but the kid... Vinny, he always see me and say, yeah, man, we beat y'all in a citywide winner. And he's a lawyer. <laughs> wow. <laughs> well, make sure you hit up David Britton because I, I sent out two messages and he didn't respond. But when I saw him, he told me he's coming on the show. So just hit him up. Tell him definitely respond back to uh, Pooh. And Ron, we're going to definitely get you up here next month, man, for sure. I'm going to make sure that happens because, you know, We've been talked about a long time, man. So I, I, I appreciate you being patient. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ronnie Arnold. Nah, definitely going to do that. It had his brother, me and his brother came up together. So definitely going to do yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Robert Harris said, thanks, Coach Days, for showing us love from New Rochelle, 914. Yeah. It was nothing hey, like being a gaucho. Hey, he was a tough kid, man. He was nice. Tough. Muscle. He went to um, Buffalo University. Now he's out in... Um, Portland, doing some real good things. Assistant coach at the junior college. He's doing a lot of good things out there. You know. Wow. Hey, yeah. I, 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 I told her, now you see that I'm not just a guy behind the mic that I actually played the game. So appreciate you checking out the highlights, brother. <laughs> Salute my guy, Ayatollah Beast, always on the check-in, supporting the show. Um, <laughs> do you think New York City will ever get back to its glory? You know, the one of the things about that is that this it's like process, progress. It's it's you know, my thing I always say that even in the summertime, wintertime, you walk walk through the parks, walk in the park, walk around the park. I think that's the foundation right there. You don't see nobody in the park mm. playing. Mm. You know. They, they, they cut half of the after school and evening programs in our areas, you know, because kids used to play 24 seven. I remember that, you know, back to that, going back to New York. I think, I hope it does. I think we need to get veteran guys. I think a lot of the young coaches are kind of scared of the veteran guys. They don't want to learn, or when they see them, they say, "Where well, he's? Why he's here?" 
They scared of their position. And they, instead of learning and picking brains, they um, hide. They hide their feelings. Instead of just being straight up, hey, can you show me? Can you teach me? Because sometimes you could, veteran coaches could like watch a game and if the game is not, walk up, leave. Because that's what I do. If I can't take it, I'm out. <laughs> if I don't see, I'm out. You know, it's, it's, it's just like that with me. It's like that with a lot of coaches in our era. You know, again, you say that will New York be like, will come back into those years? Man, they had some great plays those years, no, brother. Come on, man. I just named guys who could be Hall of Famers. Can you name a Hall of Famer? I'll tell you the best player right now that came out a few years ago would be like Kyrie Irving. And um, to me, Kyrie Irving came out to Gaucho Gym. I used to call the Gaucho Gym the factory because every time a great player come out, a great player comes in. Do you see that? I mean, in any era, Brooklyn, Queens, I, I don't know. I can't answer that really, you know, but I could tell you this, the best coaches in the era of, in, in our era, because there was teachers, trainers and coaches. You got guys who are just specially specialized in one thing. I'm just a trainer. I'm just a coach. No, I'm just a, no, we did everything. I know I did. I didn't need a whole bunch of of the coaches on. It was just me and maybe an assistant. That's it. You know, Dave McCollum didn't need a whole bunch of dudes coaching with him. I seen that. Reggie Howard didn't need a whole bunch of dudes. I seen that. You know, I see Thurman didn't need a whole bunch of dudes to tell him what to nah, He did everything himself. And I think that's the problem. Um, Tony Rosa didn't need a whole bunch of dudes. You know? I would say sometimes these, these high school coaches benches look like the NBA benches. Yeah, with... there's like there's more of them than the players. <laughs> Then you say, who's the player? Who's the coach? <laughs> That's you know? crazy. Trevor Diggs on a check in salute. Yo, Brief Trevor boy Diggs legend. My, Brooklyn Trevor Diggs legend. He's my cousin. He know that. He's my cousin. South Carolina. <laughs> That's it. The Diggs family. Definitely. Salute. Ballhead. Right. Buchanan's in the building. Appreciate you, Ballhead. Um, Robert Harris says six minute six minute runs with heavy bag. What That's was it. that? What was he that, knows. Coach? Hey, listen, if you could do that, you down. I'm gonna tell you this right now. But the guy that held the record was God bless his soul, Conrad McCray. Yes, yeah, salute McNasty for sure. Yeah, he he trained. It was the day he trained with myself and Mr. Page. God bless him. He said he wanted to work out because he heard about the workouts. He ran the bag, but 60 laps. And we had a pro court now. And then probably second one would be like um, Mashburn and Ross Strickland. That's why they were the, the players they were. That's right. Stephon ran the bag. They all know. Steph, Steph was getting that, that, that Coney Allen training. He was running the beaches and 20 some flights uh -huh. every morning, uh -huh. you know. That bag was something else, though. That, man. It that talked was, to you. Yeah, that was. Put a twenty-five crazy. pound weight in there in a, a zip-up um, punching bag, and the bag is already like 25, 50 pounds, and you got to run around the court on your toes. Can't stop, and if you stop, you can walk. Your heels off the ground. But it, what it did, it gave you height and hang time. That's why a guy like Felipe Lopez at the time, he could fly. And he could float. That's the reason why. You know, there's a whole bunch of them like that. They ran the bag because they could dunk. They wanted to dunk, run the bag, do the rope, touch the rim. That's how it was. Yeah, Reginald Howard said, Dave Jones, my main man, and the reason I ever got the opportunity to coast the Gauchos. We had a great uh, run, Dave. The early 90s Slam Magazine. Had us the first issue. Yes, we did. In the Gaucho's gym. That's right. Tell him, Reggie. Appreciate you, Reg. Tell Thank him, Reggie. You. 
you know, we was we it was like that, you know, and 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 all the credit does go to Lou. All the credit goes to Lou because he was the one that mastered all this to Jim and everything. I remember when the first opened, we had an award night at the old Savoy Manor, right around the corner. He asked me, can you walk me to his car? So it was dark. It was like about nine o'clock at night, 10 o'clock. Right. And we walked, it was snowing. It was snowing on the ground. It was cold. I said, Dad, Lou, where are we going? I said, Lou, you want me to jump somebody, beat somebody up? It was dark, there was no lights. <laughs> We're going around the corner. And all he was doing was just laughing. He said, I fixed them, I got them. I said, well, you got it. So we, he opened up this boarded door. He said, stand right here. So I'm standing right here. I walked up the stairs and I stand right there. He said, stand right there. He turned the light. I said, ooh, Lou, what did you do? <laughs> <laughs> he started laughing. <laughs> wow. And it was just a big court with the gaucho bull in the middle, clean. And he said, tomorrow we got like a, a grand opening. You tell everybody, newspapers, everybody gonna be there, get all the kids, tell them to come. And he said he was gonna throw, he gave all the kids shirts, bags from the balcony, just mm -hmm. throw it to them. That's when Pearl came. Pearl came, they interviewed him. That was, that was, it was a great, that was a great, great thing that day, man. Wow. Great. Coach, uh, let me see. I want to put something on the screen real quick and ask you. Uh, do you know any of these guys? Oh, I know them. I know Yoda. Look, Yoda ran up in the front. Yoda, whoever That's has Yoda. Yoda's number, please get in contact with him. Yoda? Definitely. Yeah, had, Yoda was. You got Yoda. Yoda you got Yoda Mashburn. Was you got Tell Mashburn me. in that picture. Yeah. Right, you got Kenny Anderson in that picture. That's right. That's uh, what he last. You got Arnold. Yeah, you got Ron Arnold in that picture. Uh huh. Yo, Willie Nasty in that picture. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, those are that's the old Gaucho uniforms. I remember those. Wow, that's yeah. crazy. And the kids kneeling down is Leonard Williams. Yes. Yeah, Cookie. Yeah. Man, man, that was Legendary a great team. Let's see. But see, the, those are the, the kids that Dave McCollin had. Mm. And they was like ripping everybody up. <laughs> yeah, Ross Strickland came on the show and said he was part of that first wave of kids that Dave brought in because he wanted to bring his young guys in. Right. When he right. first joined. So he got to bring Ross Strickland and his crew in and develop them all the way through. I think they was the Mitchell Bullets. Yes, they were. Yeah, yeah. yeah that was them. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Coach, yeah. yes. if you could change one thing about your basketball journey, what would it be and why? I wouldn't change anything because if, if I would change it, it wouldn't be what it'd be today. You know what I'm saying? And um, I'm still, I still have that hunger. I still have that, um, that vision. I still have, you know, I still want to, I'm, I'm going to be back out there. You know, I've been like, um, just hungry to get back to, to coach younger kids, to train younger kids. You know, that's that's one of my main things, you know, that I want to do. You know, it's it's something in which a lot of guys should do. Now, we were just talking about when New York will ever be back like it used to. That's where it starts. That's the foundation. You know, you know, I don't know about the reclassing and all that, because you know, eh. You know, if you could play, you could play. <laughs> I'm serious. It was bad or nothing. You know, I see something about how great was Carlton Hines. Yes. Great. Carlton Hines was great, man. God bless him, man. Yes, that, that was my God, man. Carl, you know, I seen some, man, I'll tell you a story about Carlton Hines. We was playing in the tournament. The, the head coach of that team was Dave McConnell. I think he had another game. So Fred Neal, God bless him, me and him was going, we did the game. It was a championship game against Riverside. 
They had Derek Robinson, um, Walter Berry, Kenny Hutch. That's all I have to say. All right. We had nice crew, you know, Carlton, you know. Man, we was down by two. Down by one with about four seconds left. Give the ball to Carlton. Carlton's coming up the middle, and he's rising up. And I think Walter jumped, and somebody else jumped. They shouldn't have jumped. He dunked it on them. He dunked it on But the thing about it, if you ever been in um, Roberto Clemente, it's like glass, and you could, it's an outside. You could, you, the glass doors, you could open and go outside. The brother did something I'd never seen before. And it was a championship game. He dunked it. You hear me? He dunked it and walked and left. He had a whole crew with him on the bleachers. He had like about 50 people with him. They all got off, got out the bleachers and walked behind him. Whoa. And me and Fred just looked and said, what the F happened? <laughs> that was crazy. I never seen anything like that. Never. Just like with wow. Pearl Washington, man. Pearl Washington was playing in King Towers, and Fred was doing the game. Coach Fred was doing the game. We were playing in King Towers. It was a regular season game, and Pearl was on that team. And we was playing against Olaf. They had Derek Robinson. They had that whole Manhattan Center team. Walter Berry, all of them. So... King Towers is built like an arena. There was people on the trees sitting down waiting for this game. Think about Pearl was going to come. You know, they was waiting for Pearl. But I found out Pearl wasn't coming. So the kid came by me. He says, Pearl, come. I said, no, nah, he's not coming. The kid turned around and said, hey, Pearl's not coming today. You know that that part cleared out? <laughs> Real, real story. So what happened was that we outside of the park and we see this dude in all black with a Mercedes Benz motorcycle with a female behind him. And it was Pearl. I heard the story. Yeah. Dude said, yo, Pearl is playing. Man, people was rushing back to their seats like a herd. <laughs> Me and Fred was just in the middle of the herd. We were saying, oh. <laughs> we won by um, two points that game. Pearl, of course. I heard. Yeah, you heard about that. Story. I heard about that yeah. game. I heard about that. Now, Kenny, I had Kenny Hutchinson up here. And Kenny, yeah. Kenny told That's me right. about that. And he that was right. the game that Pearl went against Kenny. That's right. That was the game. Yeah. yeah. That is that is amazing. I, it was crazy, man. I was sitting right there watching me and Fred. We just didn't know what to say when they was all running back. We talking about ladies, men, kids, strollers, everything. Everybody was going up the trees and going back to their seats. Pearl was just chilling. He was taking his time. <laughs> Yo, what's happening? Yo, they waiting for you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> wow. Man, I, I would definitely give a shout on R.I.P. to... Uh... E Mobley. E Mobley, yeah. man. Yeah, my man. Definitely in that pick as well. You know, yeah, man. Definitely, man. definitely. Great player, man. Yes, yes. And and Ron, I appreciate you for getting in contact with Yoda for me too, man. We're gonna definitely make sure that happened. Yep. So Dre McCullough on the floor in the front with Yoda. That's, That's right. The another one had him on as well. That's, That's crazy. Right. This is this is this is amazing, man. That's right. Um Walter Berry was definitely a GOAT, definitely. He's definitely on my yeah. uh, to-do list to get in the show for sure. Ron Arnold said, my dude in that pick went to war, no pun intended. Facts, facts, always. So, Coach, yes. now we're going to get into our top five, top five, top five. Uh, top five. Top five. All right, coach. I, I never asked coaches 
who the top five players are. I, I don't, I don't like that. No. I think that's very disrespectful, <laughs> right? But yeah. I am going to ask you, who are the top five players you coached against? Top five coaches? No, top five players you coached against. Oh. Like top five players that you had to prepare your teams for. Like, you knew. Yeah. You already okay. mentioned one with Pearl. Yeah, Pearl. No, was Pearl playing with you guys? Or nah, no, he wasn't playing with us. Okay. Pearl was you. playing against us. Got you. Pearl was one. Elmo was two. Who? So that was that back court. That back court was deadly. You know what? When when we went to, I was like just starting out now to travel, you know, and I did a junior team out in um, Tallahassee. And that's the first time I heard about this kid, um, Kobe Bryant. Mm. Mm -mm. The mom. <laughs> yeah, Kobe Bryant. Um, Two more. Oh. Um, Reed, what's his first name? He went to Arkansas. Kareem uh, Reed. Kareem Reed. Yes, the best kept secret. Deadly. Kareem yeah. Reed. And the last one. Oh, last one. Okay. I'll give you a nice one. Oh, Luther Wright. Mm, big Luther. Big Luther. Yeah. yeah. And, and, on the, and on the other side, Tim Thomas. Yes. <laughs> Even though I just let you get away with a six man coach, but that's okay. Oh, I appreciate it. <laughs> no, that's so good. Uh, Antoine Joseph said, Coach Dave, uh, legend, uh, is the 90s era of New York City point guards, the best guard era. Which, which era do you think was the best guard I, era? I think that, 80s, 90s, 90s. I think that era, because that's when the coaches really came out and they always said that they needed a New York point guard. They wanted a New York point guard because it was tough and all this other stuff. I think that that was the era. Because when we had round ball at the gym, it was packed with D1 coaches. I had put them in their own section, section, you know, and the gym was like packed. It was like a great, great moment for all of us, you know, signing in coaches from Calipari to God bless his soul, um, John Thompson, um, guys from California coming up, you know, Henry Bibby, um, mostly all the East Coast coaches was coming up watching our tournament because we had great games, especially in the senior division, but we also had great games in the junior division, mm. you know? So definitely that. All right, coach. Top five tournaments in New York City history. For me? Yes. Calcio Round Ball. Rucker. Boys of Yesteryear. Polo grounds. I tell you, what's the name? They sleep on Elm Corps. Elm Corps is a pretty nice tournament. Yeah, yeah. And they used to hold it in, in Lost Battalion. Now they have their own spot as well. With right. Them. Yeah. You know, in the days, that was a pretty tough tournament, too. Because, you know, you, you have to run against, like, Armand Oldham and... And Mega Water Peace, you know, Bron Ron and all them guys, man. You know, they they was tough, you know. That's a legit, that's a legit five. And, and the last one that everyone has to answer, and it's only your five, nobody else's five. It's top five players in New York City history. My backcourt is um Peg. This is this the hardest part of the show, Coach. No. You only get five. No six man. I get five. Big man is going to be Kareem. Um, I'm going to have um, Tiny. That's my man. I ain't going to leave him out. Um, 
I'm going to tell you something, man. I like Ross Strickland, man. Tiny and Ross Strickland in the backcourt. Yeah. He, he, who Bronx guys? Yeah. You know, I got to go with the Bronx. Forwards. You know what? I'm going to go with, because um, I'm going to need some some rough, a rough person, man. God bless his soul, Conrad McCray. Always oh, like Nasty, him. yes. Nice guy. Yep. Mashburn is, mm. my, is my three. That's it. Mm -hmm. So you got Kareem, Tiny, mm -hmm. Ross mm -hmm. Strickland, Mashburn, and who else? And um, um, Conrad. And Conrad. That's the five. Listen, no one has named the same five. The, I think the, the most people have picked maybe is Kareem. Like, that's like the automatic. The captain always gets the nod. Um, and then it kind of varies from there. But that's that's an awesome five right there. I appreciate it. <laughs> nah, but nah. You, you miss it. You know, there's a whole New York had like the best players. I don't care what anybody say. New York is basketball, man. That's right. You know, I don't care what anybody say. You know. And this is why we're gonna keep this legacy going and keep it alive. Uh and, and let the country know that we are still a Mecca. But I'm glad I was able to get you on, coach. I appreciate uh, it. No, I appreciate you more. Uh, thank you for everything you've done for New York City and shaping young men and women into professionals in every area of sports and in the real world. Yes. Um, you, you are a blessing. Um, we, yeah. we are grateful to, still, to have you here with us today to give us these words. And I just want to let you know you are definitely one of the greatest coaches in New York City history. Man. Well, I, appreciate I appreciate all you. that. I appreciate all that. You know, I, I give that to, you know, the God, you know, for the gift. And also give to the people that helped me get to that point. Like the Gauchos, you know, Mr. Page, Marvin Rogers, you know, those guys, community guys in my in my era, Tiny and all them other guys watching them and liking something I wanted that really I didn't think I was going to like because I liked the basketball. But this was like a, it's a, a journey that's not over. Definitely, definitely. Anything you would like to leave to younger coaches and players? Any message of wisdom? Um, because you know, uh, listen, if, if they're gonna get it for somebody, they might as well get it from you because you you've seen it all. Yeah, listen to your players. Don't try to be too, you know, like you know it all. Listen to your players and be a good listener. That's that's it. Simple. It's kind of basketball. It's kind of simple, personally. You know. You know, because if you're not going to listen, you're going to lose. And who likes to lose? In our era, losing, psst, that sucked. You know that. <laughs> you know, everybody come home with the big trophies, you know, traveling and everything. You lose, man, you know. Get snapped on and all that, man. Especially in the neighborhood, and that's your homeboy, and you beat them, and they're gonna like snap on you. <laughs> that's how that's it right. Was. Ain't no you second place that. trophies back there. That's right. That's what I'm saying. Sure, it's great. real, man. You know, I think we just need to open up them after school and evening programs, and get and get the right people in there who could teach these kids the right way. You know, you know they, they doing a, a little better job now, you know, but they could do better, you know. They could do better. Well, as long as you're still around, you're going to be able to give your insight, and we appreciate you, Coach. I thank you for coming on. And listen, from this point on, you get to hit me up and let me know, uh, yo, pool. you need to have this guy on. He, he had an impact. Uh, maybe somebody that we forgot, somebody that you're still in contact with to bring him on the show so we can also give him their flowers. I got you, brother. I got All right. you. Thank I appreciate you, your program. Thank you. God bless you, man. Yes, you do the same. Whoa. What another great show. There's nothing like it. And have y'all seen the new page is called NYC Basketball History. Because that's what we're about, preserving our history and giving light to the people who came before us 
and even the people in the present who are doing a great job. We'd like to thank Coach David Jones for coming on the show, telling the story. And, and I know there's so much more, but you know, we're doing these shows, trying to condense it to hour and a half, hour, 25 minutes. Man, there was so much that he gave so many names that he mentioned. It's just people just, it's just mind blowing to me when I sit back and I listen to coaches that came before me and was coaching when I was playing and to know that they was in the trenches helping us turn into professionals from boys to men. So we like to appreciate coaches like Coach David Jones for giving up his time and his efforts. So with saying that, for everybody that came on the show, please make sure you subscribe, hit that like button, share this, make sure everybody see this, let them know that Coach Dave Jones was in the building on Basketball Heads. NYC Basketball History. That's right. Basketball Heads Live Podcast. We are the official home for New York City basketball. And I don't have to say my name no more because it's right there on the screen. Salute, everybody. And as we always say around this time, peace.